welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got something really kind of fun. This was an opportunity that I recently had to purchase an entire lot of boxed original knockoffs. So, for those of you that follow the channel and you've seen some of my earlier videos, you know that one of the things that I love to collect is sort of a fringe collection to my matchbox are these knockoffs. And uh, these were fairly common. Um, these are made in Hong Kong, or they're stamped made in Hong Kong. So I suspect I could be wrong, and I, I want your opinion. So uh, if you have more information than I do, please leave me a comment down below. But I suspect that these are probably blue box toys. And I've talked about them before on the channel. Um, I've got a comparison video. I'll put a link down in the description for that. Um, but Blue Box was based in Hong Kong and for obvious reasons around the 1950s and 60s, uh, they were not importing a lot out of the UK or the United States. And so kids in China still wanted toys and kids in countries that could not get Matchbox and Lesney still wanted toys. And so Blue Box made a toy line and it was based very heavily on the design of the Lesney Matchbox models. Um, most of them were, if not exact, damn near exact copies of them. Um, some of them were a little bit different, like this one here you see, it's got the uh, little satellite dish here on the back and looks like a radar operator in the seat. Um, value on these is really mixed. Uh, most of the time I will only pay even for a box model, like about $5 for the model and the box together. That's kind of my upper limit if something's in really, really good condition. I bought this entire lot for 10 pounds, I believe. Um, and even with the dollars to, to pound conversion, I think it was less than 15 bucks. Um, and as you can see, these are in exceptional condition. Um, I don't think these were ever played with. The, the wheels look great. And that's one of the, the hard to find things with these because they are plastic and because they are so cheaply made, these things didn't last. You know, usually kids would get these out. They weren't even gonna make it through one afternoon of play before something broke or was missing on them. So to find these in a, an original, you know, survivor condition like this, is actually pretty hard to, to do. So they're not as collectible, they're not as desirable, which keeps the prices down on them. But they're actually, in my experience, a lot harder to find, especially to find intact. Um, so this was, was a really cool find. This whole lot here is all military vehicles uh, as well. So neat little piece there. Let's look at this one. I love their marketing, soft, unbreakable plastic. So this one here looks like it is maybe a machine gun or surface to air maybe. Looks like it's got a gun sitting on the back. Um, I don't know because this model is missing. Now, if you look at that earlier casting, I think these are the same casting so they just made interchangeable pieces. This one had the radar dish on it. This one seems to be missing the gunner and the, the little guy that would have been sitting back here and the gun. So another little piece, again, stuff like that, very, very difficult to find intact. I also think it's interesting, uh, you know, your, your history, um, all of these are cast in brown plastic. Usually when we find the military models, they are olive drab or some variation of that, um, especially if they were made in the US or in England because the militaries in those countries uh, used green, used olive drab for their military vehicles. Um, these are brown plastic because they were made in China. So that's uh, it's kind of a, a neat tie-in. 
This one here looks like another, I think that's an anti-aircraft gun, um, but looks to be original, intact. And again, comparing it to these other models, I think the base model of the truck is the exact same casting. Um, they just had an interchangeable piece here as opposed to the one that's used on these. And they all have this little ring in the back. I think maybe that was for uh, some kind of a trailer or something that would have clipped in there that you could have put them together. I've also noticed there's some variations on the paint on the front. So this one has some paint on the bumper, the grill and both headlights. This one has headlights only. So this one's headlights only as well. So kind of neat little uh, variation. And this has really been a, a fun little side collection. I think the thing I love about it the most is just the tie into history and, and learning about kind of what was going on in the world at the time that some of these were made and how that influences what we see in the production of the toys. So got a troop carrier, troop transport here. And this is a different truck. Finally, we got a different casting. Um, looks, uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape. And it's got a little canopy that goes on the back here. Look at, you, and I, I can just imagine the playability of something like this. You know, you can put the top on when you got guys in the back. You can take that top off. And you could load that up with cargo, driving from one installation to the other. Um, just a, a neat little toy. Again, all these on the bottom, they're just stamped made in Hong Kong with an F. Um, so I'm not sure what the significance of the F is. Um, but again, if any of you know what this toy line is, leave me a comment down below because uh, I'd love to look it up and learn some more about it. Here we've got, ow, oh, this is cool. A searchlight and there's actually two of these in there. And look up, look and see what we got in here. Nothing, that's a box only. So that means the model must be in this one. There we go. So we're back to the uh, same casting as some of those first ones, same truck. Headlights only on that one. And the back looks a little bit different. I was kind of suspecting it would have maybe this sort of mechanism, but this is this is different. Um, it's kind of cool. It's still got the seat. Obviously there's, there's a hole there, so it's missing a guy that would have gone in that seat. And it's missing the searchlight, which is really too bad because that would have been a really cool piece uh, to play with, um, but not in bad shape overall. And again, most of this stuff is, you know, at this point approaching 70 years old. So some of this is kind of expected as far as condition goes. And then last but not least, I've got a couple of these tanks. Uh, so we'll see, see what we've got. So what kind of condition these ones are in. So this one doesn't look too bad at all. It looks like maybe there's a, a little crack, a little tear in the plastic on the gun. And this soft kind of pliable plastic is not the kind that you can glue. So I'm gonna have to be really careful with this model. But again, stamp made in Hong Kong with the F. Um, it's got the same sort of wheels and tires set up as all the others. The gun does swivel, go all the way around. Um, and kind of a neat way to, to treat that casting. You see all the rollers down here, no treads, um, probably would have for the price and, and quality that these were done. And that would have been way too expensive to actually try to do treads on this, but neat little casting. Let's see what this other one is here. Hey, that one looks like it's almost perfect. So guns intact on that, no issues there. Rotates really nice and smooth. So like I said, getting into the uh, the variations or the sort of side collections here 
and um, knockoffs has been one of the one of my favorite parts of collecting and just learning about you know these other companies and sort of how they were trying to stay relevant in the market and produce toys that kids still wanted so like I said, if you got any information on this, let me know in the comments down below because I like to learn everything I can about this stuff. Um, as always, if you like the video, give us a like. Click that subscribe button to keep up with uh, this and all of our future videos. And as always, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.